Jacob Masterson sat in the wilderness, listening for the small, quiet voice of his God. For three days, he had knelt, a Bible clasped in his right hand, his pistols piled up before him. He was close to the edge now, his body a dried-out husk, yet still, still he would not drink. If this was his time, then he would die here, waiting for the word. Another day and night passed, and still he would not move, even when the storm hit, and wind walked and talked all about him like a living thing. Why was he here? Was it a penance for Jericho? Was it the voice of God he was waiting for, or that of the devil? Finally, with a groan, he slumped over before falling on his back, his hazy blue eyes blinded by the desert sun. North. The wind whispered, Go north. Thy will shall be done. Jacob groaned as he crawled like a broken snake towards his waiting supplies. God was wrathful and all atoned in the end. Jericho, Jacob whispered as the cold water burned his lips. Damn it, Jericho. Three days before, Jacob had stood upon a hill looking down at a small cattle town. The sun at his back and his poor, tired horse beneath him. He had ridden the mare hard for a full day and night. Now he was here, looking for a man. Not just any man, but a killer. A murderer of innocent women and children. That's what Jacob did. That's how he served God. He hunted down the evil of this world and brought it to justice. Sometimes it was men, sometimes more than men. Long ago, he had been a preacher, and in some ways, he still was. His chapel was the desert and lonely places. The coyotes and wolves, his flock. He dwelt in the badlands and border towns, listening, always listening for the word. Sometimes it came on the winds, sometimes in his fevered dreams, but it always came. And Jacob followed. Get on, Jacob urged the mare forward, not liking the look of this place. One half the town was in complete darkness, the other lit up like a Christmas tree. It was quiet, too. No cows snorted or stamped their feet, not a single cricket chirped with the setting sun, and most unnerving of all... Not a single sound of human habitation could be heard. No raised voices or body singing coming from the local saloon. No laughing children or giggling wives. Nothing. Oh, he said, pulling up outside a swinging sign. Jericho, the sign read. Check your guns at the city limit. Fat chance. Jacob said, clambering from his saddle to tie the mare to a nearby hitching post before he retrieved his rifle. He was just about to enter the town when a heavy hand fell upon his shoulder. Jacob dropped his rifle and span about, drawing his six-shooter in one fluid motion. The man before him didn't move. He didn't even flinch. Hey, who the hell are you? Jacob asked, taking in the man's rough-looking appearance and straggly beard. Best not to go in there. The stranger said, nodding his shaggy head towards the darkened tower. Why is that? Jacob asked, sliding his finger from around the trigger. Not here, the man said, heading into the darkness. I have a camp up in the hill not too far. We can break bread and talk a little. All right, Jacob said, holstering his gun and retrieving his rifle before falling in beside the stranger. I'm Jacob. You have a name? Ben. But you can call me Bear. The stranger replied. Oh yeah, and why they call you that? The man shrugged. Some say I have the strength of ten bears. Well, you sure are big enough, Jacob said, taking in the man's huge shoulders and deep chest. Again, the man shrugged. There are many kinds of strength. Yeah, Jacob replied, glancing over his shoulder at the receding town. Yeah, there are. 
Twenty minutes later, the two men were sat in a smoke-filled tent, a roaring fire between them. The nights were getting colder now, and Jacob was happy for the fire's warmth. I'm looking for a man, Jacob began. But the stranger waved that away and handed Jacob a slab of bread and some dried meat. It is customary to eat first before discussing matters of a serious nature. Jacob nodded and accepted the offered food before bowing his head and saying grace. Ben also took up the prayer, his deep voice making it sound almost musical. When the prayer was finished, Jacob raised his head. You're a Christian? he asked. I have been from time to time. Fair enough, Jacob said, finishing his meal and taking a small flask of whiskey from inside his duster. Have a drink? He offered the flask, but the man only drank sparingly before handing it back. Jacob smiled and took a long, hard pull, the fiery liquid warming him all the way down to his boots before lighting up a smoke. You said it was best not to go into town, but I have been told there is a man in Jericho that needs some killing. And I mean to do it. If the man you seek is in Jericho, then that man is dead. Or worse. Not many things are worse than death, Jacob said, crushing out his smoke. Although I have seen such states from time to time. The stranger nodded his head. Yes. You have the look of a man that has rode hard and seen much. That's why I want you to help me destroy this evil. What evil are we talking about? Jacob asked. Ben did not answer immediately. You said you've seen a few things worse than death. What are these things you've seen? Jacob knew the man had something that he wanted to tell him, but thought that he would have trouble believing it, so Jacob dove right in. If the man thought him mad, Jacob would leave him to his business and go on his way. I've seen many things while serving the Lord. At first, it was just the plain old evil that lives in the hearts of men. Murderers, rapists, thieves. When a man needs killing, the Lord sent me on my way, but there have been times when the Lord has sent me up against things that was, that was not men. Ben leaned eagerly forward. Tell me of these things that have put such a look in your eyes. I've seen men, men that can turn themselves into great beasts, dead men who stalk the night, feeding off the living in New Mexico. I killed a bruja who cursed her village. She was sacrificing a babe on the altar when I gunned her down, but even then, she wouldn't lay still until I stuffed a few pages of the good book into her screaming mouth. Took her head. After I'd finished, the villagers threw her body into a river. Said it was the only way to keep her spirit from returning. And you've killed many of these creatures. A goodly few. But thankfully, they're far and few between. You must love your God very much to perform such miracles in his name. Nope, Jacob replied. He's cold and cruel and wrathful. Even when his own son was dying, he wouldn't take the cup from his lips. So what chance does Jacob Marston have? I follow him because he demands it of me. But I don't much like it. For a moment... The big man seemed to reflect on this. Yes. God can be cruel, he said. Was it God that sent you here? No, the big man replied before reaching behind him and pulling out a small leather bag, which he tossed to Jacob's feet. It was death. Immediately, something in the bag began to twist and turn. What is it? Something of the evil of which you speak, the big man sighed. Jacob eyed the bag wryly before quickly scooping it up. Instantly, a feeling of revulsion like nothing he had ever felt before shot through his body, and with a cry, he threw it down, emptying the contents onto the hard-packed floor. It was a hand, but not like anything Jacob had ever seen before. He was huge, spade-like, covered in black scales. 
the multi-jointed fingers tipped with razor-like claws. What is it? Jacob asked, never taking his eyes from the now crawling monstrosity. I am not sure. It shifts and changes, Ben replied, grabbing up the claw, which convulsed, grasping at his wrist. With a curse, he wrenched it free and stuffed it back into the sack. See how it twists and turns. It knows its master is near. I used it to track the beast here to this place. I believe it is some kind of shapeshifter. And what happened to you? Jacob asked, crushing out his smoke. You were attacked, weren't you? By this beast, the shapeshifter. How did you survive? I fled, Ben said, looking Jacob straight in the eye. My courage gave out and I ran like a coward into the forest while that thing attacked our camp. There were maybe thirty of us, a small logging camp to be sure, a few strong men, their families, desperate to make a few dollars off the land. But then this stranger arrived. We took him in and he repaid us with murder and madness. So you fled. And then how is it you possessed this creature's hand? I returned, of course, Ben replied, straightening his shoulders. I prayed all through the long night. The screams of the dying and the creature's terrible laughter and howling echoed through the dark. That's when I heard a voice telling me to return to end this madness, and so I did. How to describe the things I saw that night as I emerged from the forest. The whole camp was ablaze, lighting up the night sky. There were pots and pans strewn about the blood-soaked earth. Bones and chunks of flesh lay scattered all about, and, and there, dancing amongst the flames, that creature, laughing and gibbering covered in blood of my loved ones. A madness came over me, and I charged the beast, axe raised as I leapt to the flames. The thing spun around, but it was too late. I was already upon the beast, slashing at its loathsome flesh. Screeching, it raised a clawed hand to protect its scabrous head, but I lopped it off. Hot black blood sprayed across my face, driving me on to greater madness. Eventually, my wild swings backed the creature up against a tree. I raised my arms for the killing blow when the creature's face began to ripple and change. My own wife's face looked up at me. Great tears and sadness ran down her face. You abandoned us, she sobbed. You ran away, and now we are one with the beast. I knew it for a ruse, but still I... I hesitated, and in that split second, the creature fled howling into the night. And you tracked it here using that thing, Jacob said, nodding towards the still squirming sack. Yes, Ben replied. The creature is here in this town, spreading its madness. I've heard screams these past few nights, and the sound of gunfire. And you did nothing? No, he said, settling down by the fire. I was waiting. For you. The next morning, the two men set out. Jacob cleaned and blessed his pistols, reciting the Lord's Prayer over them again and again, splashing the gleaming metal with blessed water. He also carried a rifle across his back and a small black Bible from which many pages were missing. Ben walked beside him, a large axe in his hand, a huge buck knife hanging at his waist. What should we expect? Jacob said as they approached the outskirts of town. Madness, the big man replied. There is something you should know. This creature, whatever it is, spreads madness and death. When I buried my people back at the camp, I saw signs of mutilation, self 
mutilation. The big man swallowed hard. It's like this thing gets into people's minds and drives them crazy. Jacob drew his pistols. Well, we'd better get to it then. Ben said nothing but trotted to keep up. Jacob lengthened his stride, eager to smite the evil that now haunted this town. They passed a saloon, its dusty bat-winged doors creaking in the growing wind. You know, Jacob said, glancing around, her place of madness and death, kind of quiet. You don't think it knows where... But that was as far as he got. Suddenly there was a scream and the street began to fill with howling people who flooded like locusts from the nearby houses and buildings, their clothes torn, their chomping jaws bloody and foaming. Jacob's hands began to do their deadly dance, gunning down the screaming mob. By his side, Ben let out a war cry and waded in, cutting down men, children, and women alike. Jacob's smoking guns clicked empty and with a curse, he backed into the saloon, his nimble fingers ramming gleaming cartridges into the smoking chambers. A man suddenly lunged from behind the bar. Surprise! He screamed through bloody teeth. Fuck you! Jacob replied, smashing a nearby bottle of whiskey across his face. The crowd was nearly upon him now, tearing at his clothes. With a cry, he vaulted the bar and ran across its length, firing into the screeching crowd as he banged through the back door and into the street, praying Ben was still alive. He rounded the corner of the building, one down boot heels kicking up dust. As his fingers automatically rammed more cartridges home, the crowd was thinning now under the onslaught of Jacob's guns, but still, on they came. Praying, Jacob stopped and turned just as a naked fat man rounded the corner, his dick swinging in the wind beneath a belly filled with flesh of his neighbors. Jacob did not hesitate but pulled the trigger, blowing the top of the howling man's head off. A woman was next, her face covered in bite marks, her eyes black and doll-like. Jacob gave her more of the same. Now only a few stragglers remain, an old man waving a cane with bloody teeth, a small child wielding a large butcher's knife and a naked girl, both nipples bitten away and her breasts covered in blood. Jacob gunned them all down without mercy, knowing they were all cursed, possessed by some terrible evil. As Jacob watched on, a final opponent charged. A man dressed in a miner's clothes, wielding a splintered chair leg. The man swung high, but Ben ducked low, slicing his knife across the snarling man's guts. The man carried on, betrayed by his own furious swing, leaving the back of his head exposed. With another maniacal laugh of glee, Ben brought down his axe, whistling into the back of the man's head, ending the fight in a welter of hair and blood. He didn't stop there, but he fell to his knees, arms pistoning up and down as he started to chop the man into tiny pieces. Ben! Jacob cried, wondering if the big man had lost his mind. For the love of God, stop! He's dead! They're all dead! For a moment, he turned and stared at Jacob, his eyes blank. But then he gave himself a shake and his eyes cleared. Yes, he said, taking a shuddering breath. They, they are all dead, but not the creature. We must, we must find it. And perhaps any survivors, take about it, survivors, perhaps, but it is unlikely. No one in my camp survived. Maybe not, Jacob said, holstering his guns. We have to check anyway. Yes, I suppose. There is a church at the end of town. Perhaps some of the townsfolk may have fled there. We should check it out. All right, Jacob said. Lead the way. A few minutes later, they were stood outside a small wooden church, all white boards and peeling paint. The doors were firmly shut, but already Jacob could hear murmurs from within. Okay. Jacob said, turning to the big man, eyeing his blood-soaked muscles. Let me handle this. I'll take one look at you and, and die of fright. You just hang back until I sort out the whole affair. Yes, Ben replied. This is your domain, creature, not mine. Jacob ignored that and hurried up the stairs before banging on the door noisily. Hello inside! Open up! It's safe now. Go away, creature. A wavering voice answered. We know your tricks. We're safe in the house of God. It must have been here, Jacob whispered, but the big man was not listening. 
He only stared up at the cloud-covered sky as if wishing he was somewhere else. My name is Jacob Marston. I'm a preacher. I've been sent here to help you. Go away, creature, another voice spoke up. You cannot enter the house of God. God damn it, Jacob hissed to himself. They're too goddamn scared to listen to reason. Looks like the hard way, then. Drawing his pistols, he unloaded them into the door. From inside came the screams of women and frightened children as he brought a booted foot down onto the now-busted lock and kicked the door wide open. A gunshot rang out and something plucked at his sleeve. But Jacob ignored it and walked inside, ignoring the milling people in the room. He dipped his fingers into a nearby font and made the sign of the cross. He turned back to them, eyeing a man half-hidden behind a pew, a shaking rifle in his hand, a dirty Roman collar around his neck. You must be the preacher, I reckon, Jacob said, watching the man carefully. Like I said, I am here to help you. You're not that thing, the man replied, lowering his rifle. It can't come in here. It's tried to lure us outside before with empty promises, even mimicking the voices of loved ones, but we all... We all knew it for a lie. Parishioners, yeah. He looked desperately at his parishioners, who nodded their support. How many are you? Uh, just what you see here. Just me, my wife, and Jenny and Joseph from a little ways down the street, and their two boys, Michael and David. The rest of the town went insane, attacking each other, biting and tearing. We all fled into the church and locked ourselves in. And that same night, a thing turned up at the door. At first it threatened us, and then it started to offer us things. I sent the others away so they wouldn't be tempted. What did it offer you? Jacob asked. But the priest only shook his head, his cheeks flushed. It's no matter, uh... We didn't heed the voice of the devil. That's good. You can't stay here. We need to get you and the children to safety. We can't leave here, the preacher said, shaking his head violently. The townspeople are all dead. My friend and I took care of them. What friend? The priest asked, trying to look around Jacob. Ben, come in here for a moment, Jacob yelled. But there was only the sighing of wind from the outside. Ben, he called again, heading outside, but the big man was gone. Goddamn fool. Might have gone to find the creature. Come on, grab your things. We're heading out. We have a camp nearby in the hills. You should be safe there. I have to hurry back and help my friend. For a moment, the priest seemed torn, but the look on Jacob's face took no argument, and he gathered his people together and hurried outside. As soon as the last person stepped outside, there was a resounding crash as the church doors were slammed shut. Jacob turned on his heels, hand dropping towards the butt of his gun, but hesitating when he saw Ben, who stood on the steps, beaming down at him. Ah, oh, Jacob, the big man grinned. What a marvel you are. I've been trying for days to get these little rabbits out of their hole, and you come along so trusting, so forthright, and pop. Out they come. He giggled incessantly, his face growing elongated, his body becoming impossibly thin and scaled. Mother of God! Jacob cursed. Ben! Ben is dead, the creature hissed through crooked teeth. May he burn in hell forever. Look what he did to me. It screeched, holding up its ragged stump of an arm from which black blood still oozed. I was fulfilled. All I wanted to do was go back to sleep in my dark cave and wait for Mother Moon to awaken me once more. But not now. Not when I am not complete. I need these people. It said, hulking forward, I must be restored before the long sleep. So sorry, it chuckled, running a blackened tongue over its drooling lips. God curse, son of a bitch, Jacob growled, slapping leather. He drew his gun, but there was only a dry click. 
Screeching, the creature leapt forward, barreling into Jacob, sending him crashing to the ground, his pistols flying out into the dust. For a moment, it loomed above him, and Jacob was sure that he was dead, but the creature leapt away, chasing down the fleeing townsfolk who ran in panic-stricken circles. By the time Jacob managed to climb to his feet, it was all over. Blood and body parts lay strewn all about. Only the beast remained, whole and intact once more. Children always taste the best, it said, sucking on its bloody claws, so young, so tender. But Jacob wasn't listening. He was already running, full tilt, back towards the church, his arms pumping, duster coat flapping out behind him. The creature gave a cheating howl and lunged after him. Jacob was almost at the steps when the creature leapt for his unprotected back. Lightning fast, he spun about and dropped on his back, pistoning his legs upward. He caught the creature high in the midriff and, using its own momentum, catapulted it up and forward, straight through the church doors. Instantly, the creature began to scream and wither, thrashing on the floor, smoke streaming from its burning back. Jacob jumped onto his feet and, smiling, paced into the church, his grimy fists clenching and unclenching. Rejoice! He intoned, Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Reaching down, he grabbed the screaming creature by the back of its neck, avoiding its swiping claws and dragging it toward a nearby font. I will instruct you and teach you in the ways you should go. I'll counsel you with my eyes upon you, he quoted, smashing the creature's face into the font, submerging its scabrous head into the blessed waters, which instantly began to bubble and steam. The creature went wild with its thrashing. With a curse, Jacob pulled a silvered knife from his belt. It stabbed the creature's side over and over again, drenching himself in its vile blood, its body twisting and turning, but Jacob bared down, pinning the thing in place until at last... Bloody and defeated, it lay still. Jacob released the creature, letting the remains fall to the floor. Requiem aeternum dom es domine et lux, perpetua leteo es, he intoned, making the sign of the cross over the smoking remains before stepping outside into the blazing sunlight. He stayed in Jericho for another two weeks, burying the dead where he could find them, before venturing into the desert. Many had died by his hand, innocent and cursed alike. Now was a time for reflection and atonement. But now that time had finished. He had come out of the desert, weak but cleansed, the voice of God ringing in his ears. North. Go. North. And so he had. Following the Santa Fe Trail from New Mexico, deep into Comanche territory and beyond. At first, he slept rough, the smoke from his small campfire bringing on haunting dreams. His days nodding on his saddle, and for a time, he stayed with a wagon train, trading the protection of his guns for food. Another time, he stayed with a group of prospectors who were heading north, the smell of gold dust filling their minds with a strange kind of fever. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you thank you so much for watching tonight's video, or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast. Hey, it's May, which means me, and actually a bunch of Creepypasta narrators, uh, it, it's our birthday month this month, so you know what would be super super cool? If you hit that sub button, if you hit that bell, and if you hit that, uh, that, uh, like, the thumbs up button, sometimes. It doesn't have to be this month, you know, sometimes, sometimes it can happen, um, you know, anytime, but it'd be real cool. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be a really great gift. Or you can check out the live stream that happens 24 seven, nonstop, all the time. And like always, I want to give a big thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon. You guys, as always, are the real MVPs. 
and I really appreciate it. If you guys want to join them, you can head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta and see all these cool, fine folk that I'm about to mispronounce the names of here or in the description down below. People such as Jacob Schaefer, Zach, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Brian Arse, Ken Lendo Higuchi, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chase Burnett, Diana Kraus, Melancholy Corpse, Hollow Zero, Ferb, Harley, Tainted Raven, Katie Birch, Sashi Sazaku, Katrina Beasel, Caden the Spooky Boy, Zane Nightshade, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Ashwood, Lord of the Weebs, Jay, Miss Zandra, Mr. Unsettling Spaghetti, Eurogore, Suji Campbell, Marco Takes Dabs 420, Stricken, Azreen Fox, Robert White, Andre Garcia, Snails Brennard, Legit Quad Feed, Fried Chicken 12, James Bruce, Chris Lovins, Freddy Krueger, Ty Nanny, 1-800 Nightmare, Unknown Nobody, Michael Scarborough, Infernal One, James Lowe, Lisa Cottrell, Jimbo the Hutt, Caspian, Jordan Nels, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Brennan Wright, Someone You Love, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Liam Newman, Sky Harbor, Caleb Dougal, Nina Smith, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, Trace Miles, and Corey Kenshin. Thank you guys, as always, for supporting the channel. You're all wonderful. I, I, I love every single one of you guys, for real. You guys help me out so much, as well as everybody down there in the description below, as well as everybody else who watches and subs and, and does everything else with this channel. Thank you guys so much. And as always, sweet dreams.